Uh, hi everybody, this is Tom. We got a real nice videos for you today. Uh, uh, featuring some of the arid land plants from South Africa's Tanqua Karoo region. Okay, but first, I got a little bit of a literary piece, a literary piece that Al Scorch and I wrote. And here it is. It's called Grey Slush Nice. I really hope you enjoy it. We worked pretty hard on it and it took us some time. Featuring a great city of Chicago. Here you go. Okay, this is uh, this is welcome to the the CPPPD uh, philosophy dungeon with us today. We got El Scorch down there in the city of Chicago, and we're here to film something called Gray Slush because it's kind of a wonderful metaphor for the uh, spiritual and philosophical existential emptiness that many of us feel inside. Uh, you know, whilst navigating the dark waters of this uh, consumer and retail economy. As we walk on the streets of Chicago today, you'll be able to look down here and see some really, there we go, some really beautiful. Yeah, can, so, we, get, can, we, get a, can we get up close to that, please? Do you have any garbage? You can, uh, let's see it in there. You can see that. And now what I really want to bring oh. to you, if you could, Tom, do you see, do you see the, the bright whiteness of that patch? That's relatively fresh. And what we want to do, we want to come over here and we'll take a little gander at what we eventually all become, which is uh, this diesel exhaust besotted mound. That's very descriptive. Is there, Al, can you get closer to that so we can really get in there and see that? Yeah, get down in there like that. We're down here. You know, I've been doing my Pilates tone so I could get low like this, you know? Okay, Al, you know, I, I just going to be honest with you, that, that is still a little too bright. We need a little bit darker of a gray. Can you get into the gutter at all? Can you get into the gutter? Don't, you know, don't put yourself in any danger by any means, but can you get into the gutter of the street where all the filth and exhaust particles, tire dust, etc., accumulate. Let's get in there again. Let's get that's, a nice. That's, that's right, Tom. Let's take a look at that and how that is actually going to be. How that? Let's get in there real nice. And oh wow! Could you see that? Oh, look at that! What do you got in there? You got a little bit of a, a wrapper. It looks like and not enough garbage, but I do like the color on that though. I do like the color. It's it's kind of like the things that we all pick up through life, you know. Uh, you know, as if we were the snow and the ice and that all of the assorted accumulation of life suffering uh, were to be joined to our spiritual body. It's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you're you're living in an overpriced apartment with no backyard, no room to start a garden or nothing. Uh, you got a non-union retail job. It's it's all that's it's really out there. Uh, you know, you got, uh, you know, you work 45 hours a week, no time for any a joy of any kind. You got to drive everywhere. You know, there's, that's just chained to a car. Oh, wow. Okay, let's, let's get close now. Now, be careful. I don't want you just to fall over. But if you can find more garbage mixed in with that uh, gray uh, slush. Tony, you want to walk us, you know, I can walk you through what we see here. You know, that's definitely... Uh, all kinds of wrappers, all kinds of delightful. Now, now, Al, Al, I do want to know: Is there? Have you seen any dog shit that we could include in the frame too? Uh, to include in this uh, a visual masterpiece? You know, a very no, we're like artists sculpting a, a sense of uh, dissatisfaction and existential dread about the world. Is there any dog shit you've seen? Tone, I'm not able to see any dog excrement at the moment. I think what's going on is a lot of people are just taking their dog out a few steps from the door and they're just, you know, they're letting it either freeze or and be buried under the snow that it's yet to be revealed. I'm going to go with that it's buried under the snow, you know, kind of like a, a chocolate chip in the center of an a, a oatmeal cookie. That's right. That's right. It's it's really uh, an unexpected surprise that may, uh, you know, may not be what you want uh, when you want it. Al, could you describe what the temperature is right there right now? I'd say it's about a frigid 17 tone. And uh, I got it. Warm. Yeah, I got it. You know, for this time of year, it's quite warm. Uh, and everybody uh, is out enjoying it. I'm surprised no one's at the lake. They usually, you know, show pictures of that. A technical glitch, and I heard, uh, I, I guess you got problems with the phone, but you got the gaffer's tape uh, keeping the plug and battery charged into it now. That's right, Tone. We have overcome these technical difficulties, and we do have the power cord from the power bank gaffer's taped into the phone, so we're not going to lose reception anytime soon. In my travels, as you can see, I've come along a bare parkway here, 
And there's really nothing like the melted snow to reveal the grassless, muddy, garbage strewn path beneath it. So, you know, it's a lot like, you know, as we melt away, you know, these false items of identity, our true self comes out. And sometimes you don't like what you look like down in there, deep down, and you got to get in there and change that, you know. Do you see any dog shit there? Do you see any? Because that does look terrible. Yeah, I'll be honest. It looks pretty bad. you see any dog shit down there? Let's get another look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's terrible. That is, that's really, that's awful. That looks really bad. Oh, oh look at mm -hmm. that. That is, that's, nothing really sums it up like, uh, like gray slush and freezing drizzle. And do you think you guys are going to get any freezing drizzle later tonight? You know, Tone, I think that's a huge possibility. We will get some freezing drizzle. It is in a forecast this afternoon. And you can be assured that I will don my foul weather gear and I will get out there and provide this coverage for the crime pace community. You know, the freezing drizzle, the way it bites your face, it makes your, your skin sting. And then you're being smacked in the face with these cold, semi-frozen raindrops, especially, you know, while you're inhaling the wafts of the diesel exhaust of a passing CTA bus. Okay, I will, uh, we'll end it right there. I want to thank you a lot for your time today, and you have a good uh, rest of your morning right there. I will. I got to go borrow the van over by Glenn's now, go to my mom's and get the bookcases out the basement. Okay, take well and be safe. Take care, bye. Okay. And now our feature presentation, nice. Uh, yeah, hi everybody, this is Tony. Uh, greetings from the succulent crew. All right, beautiful morning here. We stayed at some weird burner camp last night. You know, it seems like they're trying to do the whole Burning Man thing. They had some weird German techno pop. You like techno pop? Oh, they yeah. had that going on. Uh, everyone was drunk last night, you know, but it was nice. We stayed in a little a little shake. Anyway, let's, uh, let's check out this mallow we got going on right here. Look at this guy, flowering from the ground. Look at that, flowering beneath those leaves, everything just covered in the trichomes, covered in the hairs. All right, look at those uh, malvaceous leaves, palmate leaves. Got your little uh, androphor in there, all those stamens. All those stamens with the, uh, you got a stigma in it? What's the stigma look like? Oh yeah, it looks like a little knob. All those stamens fused to that column. Whirled around that comb with a little knob. Look at look at it. Look at all the those hairs in there. Look at all the hairs coming off that goddamn calyx. What an amazing plant. Look at that thing. We got a couple of them going off. Now the guy was talking to in there said that the, a flood came through here. He had about uh, two or three feet of water in May coming through this little wash. It's amazing how much this whole area just feels like the Mojave Desert. You like German techno pop? Not me. Red Ura urens, one of two species in the genus Red Ura. The other one's in Australia. They both like the arid environments. Looks like a damn squash almost. Look, looks like someone uh, spilled some alfalfa or something. But it's actually a little pea. A little prostrate pea. Look at that thing. Tiny, flush with the ground. Covered in the trichomes. Can be upwards of 110 degrees here in the summer. How does this guy do? He's a perennial too, not an annual. Look at this too, look at this. We got a little camp, another little camp. Get those leaves. Do you see any hairs on there? No. Dissected leaves, they got kind of a rubbery texture to them, almost kind of succulent, pseudo succulents. Seems this guy's an annual though, unless he comes back from the root. And uh, there's that, the. Uh, Capitulum. Those filers. Look at the shape of that too. Little flying saucer. Little flying saucer discoid head. There's the filaries folded in. And there's the seeds. Even more bizarre. Look at how tiny. Look at how tiny those goddamn Akeens are. Do you like German techno pop? Another tiny little scroff. Perennial? Kind of looks like it. Oh, you got you got the two different kinds of flowers on there. Look at that. How does that happen, huh? Just like they're spilling out the sand. Oh, look at that style sticking out right there. Little accumulate the tip on that leaf. 
another little spinos p those branch tips just the terminating in spines there's the uh, very tiny triffid leaves each one maybe five millimeters long each leaflet five millimeters long there's the fruit and there's it the banner wings and keel kind of a long calyx uh, comparative to the flower and everything just covering in little hairs and little bean a little bean for what a weird what a weirdo zigzag kind of branching structure well we made it about 150 feet and then we saw some more nice stuff so uh we got out to take a look here we got a nice member of the isoacea a nice misem haven't seen this guy yet there's the fruits on it look at that flower too look at that succulent juicy perianth actually i guess that would be the ovary the succulent juicy ovary look at the texture on it of course petaloid staminodes all those uh what look like white uh, rays and then you got the all the good stuff in the center right there can't quite see the uh, style and stigma just a bunch of stamens but yeah look at that this is you know it's like i said it's hard to get excited about a lot of members of this family but every once in a while you see a really nice one it's amazing how much this feels like the mojave desert the mojave slash colorado desert this mallow kind of grows like a cucumber it's kind of got a little cucurbit the habit to it those leaves man look at this weirdo you got a persistent style on those fruits those are the fruits right there looks like it's done flowering smells absolutely terrible very bitter kind of like burning rubber distinct shape to that calyx though look at those leaves they got the nice pigments in you can see a little bit of pink pigment in there what about the leaves oh yeah you got some scales little scale like hairs the verbena family i never would have guessed even the grasses here are bizarre and worth noting nice uh nice glaucous color pretty rigid leaves look at this little tuft Look at this little tuft up there. What's that about? Little whirl of uh, hairs. Fruits that kind of look like a, uh, a porcupine needle. Look at this prickly weirdo. With those stiff hairs, this is a barrage. Trichodesma africanum. There's the flowers right there. Look at a keeled calyx, a keeled pentagonal calyx, like a little star. Then the petals all fused together, almost looking like a little morning glory flower. But you still got that perfect star of a calyx behind it, that purple uh, or that maroon, that perfect maroon star behind it. It's a prickly fucker too. Look at it. Pretty weird, pretty weird for a barrage. Pretty weird for a barrage. Really taking those, it's really accentuated those prickly stiff little hairs. With the keeled calyx, I don't get what, are those nectaries on there? Are those for the nectaries? Those little maroon dots, are those the neck? Is that where you get the nectar from? Is it like the old country buffet for the uh, pollinators? We got this. I don't know if this is native. Argemony, the prickly poppies. This could be introduced. I didn't know they had these here. I didn't know they had these. You got these here? You got those there? I don't know if you got them there. You talk like that, and then I just wonder why people in academia just, just tend to rub them the wrong way just don't understand <laughs> i didn't know you had these here you got that there 
And some people's sense of humor just gets so fucking... I, I don't know. I mean, what is it like living with people like that? You know? They just want to make you die inside. Ugh. It's just super vanilla, wholesome sense of humor. Take themselves too seriously. Hang their credentials on a wall. Anyway, look at this, uh... Look at that ovary in there. And of course, with the Argemenes, I, I have to admit, I do love the way the stigma looks. Look at that. Look at that. That mahogany weird fucker... God... Oh, the stamens on these look pretty nice. I'm going to have to get some money shots of these. The anthers are looking pretty good, too. Look, you see, you still got on these where the fruit has already matured. You still got the old stigma up top there. See that? Just stuff that in your mouth. You like it? Might taste good. Might be an herbal remedy. Look, look. in Celia. How many times each episode will I say, look at this? Look at this. Huh? Dick? Another variation on a composite. This family is so diverse here on this continent. A lot of members of uh, Carduoidea, this thistle subfamily, and a lot of members of the Paper Daisy subfamily. Nephalia, and a lot of, not, not subfamily, excuse me, tribe. And a lot of members of the Chicory subfamily as well. Sicorioidea. Okay, give those uh, phyleries a proper rectal exam. Oh. You got a nice uh, indumentum. Indumentum.com. Rub my indumentum.com. Get a nice money shot of those uh, styles. We'll go in there. Go in there. Oh, like little rads. Like little rad Blagojeviches. You ever seen rad running the lake? If you do, say hi, rad. It's not your fault, rad. You were a victim, Rad. But that whole tribe, which is actually a member of the Chicory subfamily, which is fucking weird enough in and of itself, is mega diverse down here. Woolly cottony in Volikers. And there's those leaves, kind of looking like mustard leaves. Kind of uh, clasping leaves, sessile leaves. Could you call, or could you call that a petiole? Fuck, I don't know. It's getting hot now. See, wouldn't you like to do MDMA in, in a dance to German techno pop here? Okay, and if you say no, I don't blame you, but, uh, you know, maybe it wouldn't be so bad, you know, you could do it once, you'd probably have to be plied with a lot of drugs. Look at this pavement with the vent effect nice, the polishing of the rocks by the wind-blown sand grains. Not much growing here. The resemblance to the Mojave is, is impeccable. What's the word I use? I don't fucking know. But the difference between here and the Mojave is that you don't have a bunch of white people in wide-brimmed uh, fedoras uh, taking selfies, you know? Which is nice, too. Oh, what is that? What is that? What the fuck is that? What is that? What is that? It's not in bloom, but it's fine. It's a succulent goddamn milkweed. Yes, what the fuck is that? Oh my god, it's very spiny. Look at that. Oh, is that a calyx still on there? What the shit? Oh my god. Look, it looks like a little dog dick. <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? But they're actually fruits. They appear to be apocinaceous fruits, little bullhorn fruits. And look at the epidermal tissue. You got ribs in there. The epidermal tissue on that succulent stem has been adapted into uh, spines. Did you know the milkweed family had succulent members? Many, many succulent members, actually. Many of them native, if not endemic, to uh, the succulent Karoo of South Africa. Then down here, we got an albuca, albuca buca. The leaves seem to have gone. So this is splitting up its photosynthesis and its flowering. Well, I guess you're doing some photosynthesis in that stem. Get inside and look at that. Oh, that's nice. Triffid stigma. I don't even, where the fuck are the stamens? Are they in there? I'm gonna have to get money shots. Yeah, they're in there. They're in there. They're just small. 
Notice how on this Albuca, three of those peoples act like a little, look at that. You got all the pollen coming off right there. Maybe just because I've been touching it. Three of those peoples act like a little hood for three of the stamens. Three of those stamens are longer than the others. Does that, does that mean three of them, those three white ones are sterile? They're just staminodes? That's bizarre. Maybe I have, you know, maybe that could be the whole genus. I just never noticed it. But uh, I'm taking note now. God damn, that's weird. Look at those beautiful green striations on all those peoples too. Over here, we got a member of the uh, genus asparagus. Yes, that asparagus. Look how spiny. The one that makes your piss stink. Look how spiny, that, uh, another very species rich genus. 90 species of this genus in a cape. And quite a few of them used in horticulture. Look at those leaves. How are you a monocot? How'd you do that? And many of them are spined too, of course. But a true asparagus. In fact, that's most of what this uh, these shrubs are. Look out into the vast openness. Look at that. Any plant that can cut it here is gonna have some special evolutionary adaptations. How long these rocks been laying here for? How'd they get so polished and nice? I'll tell you how they did that. True to vent effect, true to wind blowing tiny sand grains. Just metamorphosed ocean sediments. You got any fossils in there? Maybe you got some bivalves? There were bivalves around in the Ordovician, right? They got cobras out here. They got all kinds of deadly scorpions. They got some that'll just make you miserable, but they're not gonna kill you. They got all that stuff. If you don't want it, they got it. Cool little geophyte, a little late to catch them. Looks like they're all done. What's this? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Looks, uh, that might be basalt. Is that basalt? I can't, you know, I, Jesus Christ, I can't even tell. Everything's so polished. Look at that. That looks like uh, limestone or perhaps metamorphous sandstone. Look at this. We got a fungus. Is this analogous to our uh, potaxis pistolaris? Look at all the sports come out of it. The potaxis pistolaris that we get in the uh, deserts of North America. Get some spores. Should I do a line? Just come on right out the sand. Here we go. Nice, uh, nice variation on a carrot. Stem photosynthesizer. You got leaves, but they're uh, vestigial. See that? Get some, uh, yeah, barely, barely. Nice, uh, nice striations on a stem though. Look at the texture of that stem. Oh, you got some wax it appears too. I'm rubbing it off with my greasy Dago fingers. Up here you got an umble, highly reduced flowers. A desert shrub carrot. A desert shrub APAC. Let's take a look at those flowers nice. Those new money shots. Look at those yellow petals. You get the stamens poking out. Only a few per flower. Only a few stamens poking out per flower. Got some nectar on here? You must. And then here's the fruits. You like the fruits? Got nine species in this genus, the very. They got some interesting pharmacological uses. You know, like a lot of carrots, they got interesting phytochemistry. Just looking like a, looking like a grass. Boom, 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 boom. Now he's traversing east on the sandy plains that puts Taquet Karu over there. Nice. Look at that landscape. Typical fucking white male. Typical fucking, typical fucking cisgendered white male. Just walking around like they own the place. Whole lot of nothing. Okay, now this this one I got to dub over because this is Mesembryanthemum eurystigmatum. I mean, I was actually berating them here, you know. It was before I was really taken with the family Isoaceae, and I was asking them why they all look the same, okay. I'm not proud of it, but that's the honest truth. These succulent nectariferous bastards are able to grow in some of the harshest conditions, so uh, let's give them some applause, huh? This looks like one of those little pom-pom fruits, you know, like a little, it looks kind of like, uh, you know, those uh, things you're supposed to hit with the ski balls at Chuck E. Cheese. Fleshy. Are you an annual? Looks like it. 
You got a little red. What's red in there? Is that red or just what, what's going on with this? One day, one day I might get into your family, you know? I mean, you're more appealing than grass, kind of. I will say, though, I will say that you're doing very well for yourself out here. Look at it. You got a, you're one of the only plants that seems to have a good hold on this landscape, this barren landscape that seems to be dominated primarily by uh, mud stones and shales and whatnot. Are they from the Ordovician too? Ooh, shale beds. Shale outcrops. We got a species of code on. Actually, I think we've seen this guy before. It used to be in Baraginaceae, but now it's in its own uh, family, I think. Still the same order, though. Spiny bastards. Look at those. Look at those prickles. Look at the fruits. Yeah, we're going to take it back. Introduce it to the Mojave Desert. All your favorite uh, rest stops. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You never know. Some people... Uh, can't catch satire, especially in California. Too many literalists out there. Yeah, you get some erodium. Or is that a pelargonium? I don't know, whatever. No, that's not. Oh, my God. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I was uh, totally wrong. Look at that. You got a scrof. Possibly one of the dumbest genus names in existence, James Britannia. Look at that uh, persistent style. I'm sorry I called you an erodium. Don't be offended. Not the, surprisingly, oh, whoa, this is, you know what? I was going to say this is heliophile. I, need, I really need to shut the fuck up and just uh, document. Now, look a little harder. We got a uh, Campanula. Are you perhaps a Wallenbergia? Oh, there's, oh, no. See, I was right. There is a heliophile there. You got two of them. Africa, South Africa's favorite uh, Brassica genus. God, the resemblance to the Mojave is just... Anyway, I uh, got, quite, got quite a few uh, nice uh, annuals here. There's that uh, Campanulaceous Bastard. Possibly a Wallenbergia. Check out the uh, calyx on that guy. Look at the uh, base of leaves, too. Of course, they got the hairs. They got those little prickly stinging hairs, just like so many of the plants here. Prickly stinging hairs or resin. Another heliophila. Like I was just showing you, there's those salix, brassicaceous. Brassicaceae and mustard. Sepals interspersed with the petals. You got this, uh, and then you got that scrope I was just showing you as well. All coming up on the shale. This guy's very glandular. And those glands, of course, have a fragrance to them. Oh, I don't know how this guy kind of smells like hot dogs, kind of smells like meat. Wouldn't say it's pleasant, but uh, look at this. So many little desert annuals. Live for two months, if that. Produce a ton of seed, die. And uh, then your seeds will just stay in the soil. Laying in wait throughout the summer. Here we got a look, an amnesia. Scrofulariaceae. Got the nectar spur right there. Again with the glands. Again with the glands. In a persistent style. Does this have a persistent style when they're done? I don't see any that done yet. Well, maybe that guy. Maybe that. No, no, no style. And there's some shit. What do you think made that? Huh? Look at the shale bits. You like the shale bits? Oh, that's nice. So look, you got a little, uh... What the shit is this? A new composite. So you got a change in depositional environment right here. Who knows how, uh how long of a time span that represents. But the rock is a little bit more solid. It's not the shale, the mudstone. Or if it is, it's just maybe a little bit more cooked. Oh, Christ. But you can see they're eroding out. It's just falling on the ground like a bunch of china plates everywhere. You see that? Evidence of some uh, succulent. Looks like a, a posinaceous succulent. God, look at this camp. Look at his camp. That guy's a stunner. And there was just a beetle in there. He's got that little pattern on his ligules too. The little beetle pattern. Look how his ligules fold in like that. Until they, uh, apparently until they heat up enough by the sun to fully open. Let's take a look at his uh, phyleries. Oh, you got glabrous phyleries. What are you doing there? 
God, it's so weird to see. We don't get com we don't get composites. We don't get members of Asteraceae like this in North America. You ever gonna see phyleries like that? And what's this? Look at how those ligules close up when they're done. What a weirdo. I love it. Here's a genus we've seen before, but not in the Karoo, not in the desert. Monotypic family here is the only genus in it. Limium. Limaceae is the family here. Get up close, look at those flowers. Ooh, you got a black calyx. You got black calyxes. Little yellow anthers, a little papery corolla in there. And uh, you can see some of those uh, flowers just laying, laying flat, at press to the, sh the crumbling shale laid down in an ancient ocean. Got a little woody uh, trunk. Looks like somebody's been gnawing on him, but then he just re sprouted. Re sprouted at the onset of rains. I like this landscape. You got more of that layer. See, just this harder layer just the collapses as the shale beneath it uh, is eroded and weathered away. What's going on with the little uh, chamber down there? It is a uh, companionate bastard. Look at it. You got little, uh, are those nectaries? Those, see those five little yellow chambers down there? Speak in the booth. You like the Swedish chef? Did you ever watch the Swedish chef on the Muppets? Wasn't he trying to eat Big Bird or something? Got a nice bulbiny. Aloe family is photolacy. Those hairy filaments. those leaves like a bunch of little green tentacles coming up from that uh, storage tissue down there in the ground it's mostly done there's the fruits maturing what is it is it the calyx or the uh, the papery sheath the calyx center ah oh, flowers don't smell too bad either smell pretty good Ooh, it's starting to get lit up. Apparently they got some rain here. There's that camp. Again with the uh, glabrous phyleries. Glabrous and waxy. A little bit of blue on the underside of that ligule. Oh, this is a nice variation on an albuca. Look at that. You got a fuzzy stigma. Look at all the hairs coming off those, that stigma. Waiting to receive pollen. Then you got those uh, stamens widened at the base. You got a green ovary in the center and you got a green keel on those yellow tepals. Banger alert. Albuca suaviolens right there. And then continuing with our theme of geophytes right here on these uh, sandy barrens, we got the tracheandra. Look at those hairy leaves, hairy stem. Got about, I don't know, 15 species to choose from. Look at those pendant flowers. All right, red stems and a maroon keel on those white tepals right there. Look at that nice, nice money shot up there. Got a nice euphorbia. Here's those inflorescences. Actually, they're cyathea, excuse me. Right here we have uh, female flowers. You can see the ovary right there with that three-branch style. Lots of nectar here. And then over there, here's the uh, male flowers. Cool desert iris. Basically done. He's basically done. You can see he's already gone. The fruit up there, those little capsule fruits, but you got a couple flowers still lingering on. Look into my perianth. How come those two tepals wither already, but then you still got four left? Mesembryanthemaceae slash Izoaceae being a ham. And Aster AC too, lots of, lots of composites, lots of camps. Here we go, nice osteospermum. Of course, smells pretty funny. There's those distinct Achaeans. All the osteospermums kind of stink. I kind of like it, but look at that winged Achaean. Ooh. Where are the glands at? You got the glands on her? Oh, yeah, look, you got a bug stuck to those. Very pungent. Also, to comment on the geology, it looks like we're getting some of that, that, that diabase, with, which they call dolerite, which is intermediate between basalt and gabbro. It's a mafic rack, but it's an igneous rack. 
You know, so whereas basalt would be extrusive, gabbro would be intrusive. Same composition, just one cools, you know, underground, one cools on a surface. This is an intermediate. It would be intermediate in grain size and cooling time. Oh, I got a nice stackies. Lamioid. Sage family. Lamiaceae. Look at it. World around the stem. And of course, hinting at its evolution in an arid environment, you got those fuzzy calyxes. Look at the hairs on the calyx right there. And then just beneath it, you got one of those uh, irids. And it's the flower's still good. You can see what's going on. Got that style. Erect, standing above those three uh, anthers right there. But they're all on the same column. How'd you do that? How'd you do that? Not bad. Nice. Stunner. Smells pretty good. Then who else we got down here in the GFI dungeon? This is a this is a member of the genus Dipcati, all right? The name kind of sounds like some sort of stupid Italian sports car. You know, I, I really can't respect anybody who drives those things. No offense, all right? Misplaced value system. Anyway, look at these flowers. Two series. The tepals occur in two series. You could call them petals and sepals. But either way, you got a waxy stem. Quite a beautiful flower. Another member of that uh, hyacinthaceae, that hyacinth family right there. Coming up out of Barron's. Look at that nice, nice carpet of uh, Asteraceous bastards, of the Asteraceae, of that camp. You got a nice gladiolus here, another nice glad. Look at its mouth. God, I'm really, I got a newfound uh, appreciation for Iridaceae now. What a fascinating family. Fascinating family of geophytes. Nice dolerite too, huh? Oh, you got that nice stackies over there. Look at that with the mountain on the background. Isn't that scenic you can put on a calendar? This fucking weirdo looks like a Hermania at first. Looks like a Malvaceous. When you take them apart, the anthers look... You can see those. It looks pretty bizarre. See those anthers left over? The fruit looks uh, right. Fruit looks right for Malvaceous. The calyx looks right. The branching structure, look at that. The, the leaves even look right. And you got this uh, acanthaceae up here. With the bilateral flower, Monecma spartioides. Look at all those. Those anthers kind of come out the sides. Stamens come out the sides. That's because they're protandrous, so they're male phase first, and the stamens get out of the way so the stigma can get some pollen. You see this in a lot of the members of this family down here. So the benefits of this is that they don't cross pollinate. See how those stamens look? They're just the stamens are completely out of the flower now. Kind of a cool little mechanism you see in a lot of the acanthaceae down there. Very bizarre. Nice little shrub, sub shrub with the dolerite right in the background. You make a nice little painting for some of the nicotine stained walls of the motels in here. That's all I got. Go fuck yourself, bye.